Hi everyone, Wan Leong here. Okay, uh, we previously learned about reflection on a plane mirror. So today we're going to learn about reflection on spherical surfaces or curve mirror. So, reflection on a spherical surface or a mirror. Reflecting surfaces don't always have to be flat like a plane mirror or the mirror that you use at home. The most common curved mirrors are actually spherical, which means they are part of a sphere. So, spherical mirror is a reflecting surface with spherical geometry, which means we have the diameter, we have the center of the sphere, we have the radius. Okay, so if I have a spherical, hollow spherical, which means inside is empty except the wall, if I were to cut portion of this sphere out, I will actually create my spherical mirror. Alright, there's two types of spherical mirror. First is a concave mirror, and the second is convex mirror. How do we identify concave and convex mirror? If the girl is the object, and the girl is in front of the mirror, the mirror bends in. Right? If the mirror bends in, then it's a concave mirror. And if you notice, cave normally bend inwards, isn't it? So this is how I actually remember that it's a concave mirror. Then for convex mirror, it's the opposite. If the girl is the object, the mirror bends outward, then it's a convex mirror. Okay, so that is how you see. Bending inwards, concave. Bending outwards, convex. Remember, it is respect with the object in front. Okay, so there's a few terminologies that we have to understand. We can't use maths terminologies here. We have to use physics terms. So let's just say right now, okay, center of the curvature C is the center of the sphere which the surface is part. This particular point is the center of the curvature. Vertex is the geometrical center of the mirror, which means if the mirror is this way, all right, remember this is curving inwards, so this is a concave mirror. This point, the geometrical center of the mirror is called vertex. As for a convex mirror, if the object is at this side, the mirror is bending outwards. This particular position is our vertex. Principal axis of the mirror is actually the straight line joining to center of curvature and vertex as well as the focal point. Then there's a few more other terminologies. One, from the center of the curvature to the vertex is our radius. There's no difference, all right, from the mat. So the radius is from the center to the side, okay? Same thing to the convex mirror from the vertex to the center. Then there's one something special. If I were to take this radius and divide it by two, I will actually get my focal length. Focal length is half of the radius. And if you notice, radius is the distance between center of the curvature and the vertex. It's written in small r. Focal length is from the vertex to the focal point, small f. So distance or length, we use small letters. But for here, this point is the center of the curve. So it is actually capital C. Vertex is the position. It's also capital V. And F, this half of between of this radius, this capital F is the focal point. Alright, focal point is the position midway between center of the curvature C and the vertex V. Radius of the curvature small r. Distance from the vertex V to the center of the curvature. Focal length F is the distance from the vertex of the mirror to the focal point. Note, remember, distance for number 5 and number 6, both are distance. So, radius is written as small r, focal length is as small f. The focal length of a spherical mirror of radius r is half of it. F equals to r over 2. Please remember... This is focal length small f. So let's recall, how do you identify the focal length for a concave and convex mirror? Focal point, 
how do we identify them? So this is my method on identifying. As you can see as a diagram, there is uh, this particular cave, isn't it? So cave normally bends inward and normally cave are actually very dark and creepy sometimes. Why? Because we have no idea what is in the cave. Is it a lion, a bear or bats? Okay, so normally cave bends in and if there is a little child coming to this cave, how is the child's expression will be? Very scared, isn't it? So what happens here is, if I were to draw a diagram, this triangle to represent the mountain, cave normally bends inward, right? Cave normally bends inward, just like our concave, okay? So what happens here is that the child will actually be standing in front of the cave, okay? And they will be very scared to enter. So they have the fear of entering the cave, all right? Because they don't know what is inside. So the fear of entering the cave is the keyword that I use to remember the focal point of the concave mirror. Why? Because fear starts with a capital F. Fear of entering the cave, the boy will be stuck in front. The F, the fear F is in front and the cave is here, pointing inwards. So let's go back to this diagram, spherical. Uh, this is a spherical glass. So this is my principal axis, this is my center of the curvature, C. Half of the center of the curvature is my focal length, focal point, sorry, capital F, similar to here. Alright, so I'm going to cut this glass into like this. Alright, so I have two curves here, curving out and curving in. So I'm going to help with this. I put an object here. And I label it O, object. Okay. With respect to this object, I have one mirror curving outwards and one mirror curving inwards. And notice just now my analogy. The boy stands in front of the cave because he fear of entering the cave. So if this is the shape of the cave, remember the cave is bending inwards. So this is the shape of the cave, isn't it? The focal length, uh, sorry, the focal point of this particular mirror is actually in front. So, for concave mirror, the word cave is here. Fear of entering the cave. F is in front. So, F, the focal point of the concave mirror is actually in front. While the other one automatically for a convex mirror, right? The focal point is behind. Alright, so remember, fear of entering the cave, the F is in front of the cave. Therefore, the focal point of the concave mirror is in front. Alright, why am I explaining in front and behind? Because concave mirror, after reflection from the mirror, parallel incident ray converge, come together at the focal point. So if I have this particular concave mirror here, all right, from C to the vertex, that's my radius. From the focal point to the vertex is my focal length. So if I have parallel rays, which means the object is very, very far away, all right? So if there is ray coming in, reach the mirror, it will be reflected, it will bounce back. So it will reflect and as though that it meets at this focal point. So that's the reason why I teach you that the focal point is in front of the concave mirror because the rays are supposed to converge at the focal point. Therefore, concave mirror has another name which is converging mirror. And as for convex mirror, this is a convex mirror. The focal length of the convex mirror is behind the mirror. If there are parallel incident ray coming in, right? Parallel incident ray, which means the object is very far, far away, it will reach the mirror. And when it bounces back, when it reflects back, it is as though that is being reflected from a point. It comes from a point behind the mirror, which is actually our focal point. So. 
when it when we draw later on, I'll teach you how to draw. Whatever that is behind the mirror, we draw it using the dotted lines. Okay, so that is actually how we identify concave mirror and convex mirror. Okay, so I hope with this explanation you will know some terminologies for mirror, how to identify concave mirror and convex mirror. The next video that I'm going to record is going to be about how to draw ray diagrams. So stay tuned and I hope you understand. Any feedback, please let me know. Bye!